Right, so now we're going to be importing your 3D model into Unreal Engine. So there's a few steps on how to do this. The first thing you'll need is something called Datasmith. Now, this is a plugin available for most um, 3D modeling software. It's available for things like Rhino, 3DS Max, Blender, Archicad. I'm sure Revit will have something. So what you'll need to do is the program that you've created your 3D model in, you'll need to make sure you've got the Datasmith plugin installed. Um, so if you just Google whatever program you're using and then Datasmith and then download and install that exporter. It's available for pretty much all mainstream uh, 3D modeling software. But if your software that you're using doesn't have Datasmith, the other best option is just to export it as a OBJ. So it's relatively easy to install Datasmith for whatever program you're using. So you go ahead, download that. And then we're gonna be exporting from Rhino to Unreal Engine as this is the best pipeline that I use. So when you've created your model in Rhino, there's a few things you wanna keep in mind before we export this into Unreal Engine. Firstly, you want to make sure your model doesn't have any crazy detailed areas. Uh, what, I, what I mean by this is, I don't have this anymore, but I had a 3D model trees with like thousands and thousands of little polygons, like one leaf was one polygon. And so that means that there'd be like thousands of leaves and anything with an extremely high polygon count uh, may slow down an Unreal Engine or cause it to crash. And plus, um, trees look much better when you use uh, trees that are optimized for Unreal Engine. So just be careful there's no extremely high poly count vegetation. Uh, complex and broken meshes are another thing. This model is an example of something that you want to import, so there are no um, examples of this, but if you've got a mesh that looks like it's kind of warped and broken and kind of got different surfaces, you can just tell when a mesh is too complex or it's got a broken surface, that will show up when it's being lit in Unreal Engine. So just be mindful of that. Uh, also a good thing is you can export lighting and cameras. So if you've got cameras set up, which we don't in this case, but if you set up a camera and then select it when you export, it will export your camera as well, which will also go into Unreal Engine, which I think is pretty good. Uh, also any materials that you've got set. So if I go to rendered, I've already got these materials set in Rhino and these will be exported into Unreal Engine. Uh, something to keep in mind is that it doesn't really import like bump maps and reflection uh, parameters so the materials will look flat and and basic in Unreal Engine but it's always it's, I think it's always good to export your textures from Rhino because sometimes these little tiny details might have a texture on it that would take too much time to re-texture in Unreal Engine so if you can just natively export all of the textures and then just redo the main textures once we're in Unreal Engine that's the most efficient way I think to so say we import this I'd change this to an actual aluminium, I'd change this black to an actual painted material, but say the material that's on these cables, I'll just leave it like that because it's not really a high detail. So now we're going to choose what to export. From Rhino, I like to just go cell curve and just hide all of the curves. Uh, I won't be in exporting the lights because we're going to set that up completely in Unreal Engine. However, you've set up your layers, it will be imported like this into Unreal Engine. So all of your furniture will be under one actor with all of the meshes as a child of that actor. All of your interior meshes will have this interior layer as the parent. So now we're going to select all. It will type export. And then we'll go down to Unreal Datasmith. And just keep in mind when you're naming a file that you don't put any spaces in it. So I'll just call it something with no spaces, click save textures, save plugin data, go save, and there we go. So now we've exported this from Rhino. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and close this. Once we're in Unreal Engine, firstly you'll need to go and enable Datasmith. So we go up to edit, plugins, and you can just search Datasmith, and then you go to Datasmith importer and enable this. I guess if you're going from Cinema 4D, you can enable that. And probably also enable Datasmith content, but the main one is just this, the Datasmith importer. Then you'll probably need to restart your program after that. So once you've restarted your program, you'll now be able to import things with Datasmith. So we go up to here, to the green plus, and then we go Datasmith, and go File, Import. Then wherever you saved your file, just make sure that there's that asset folder that saves with it. Just make sure it's still in there, so um, it's able to read that asset folder. Let me go ahead and go open. I always like to make a new folder within my project just for the Datasmith import. This keeps your uh, file structure more clean and go OK. 
good geometry, materials and textures. If you have lights and cameras, you can click these. If you're exporting from like Blender or something and animations, you can click that as well. Uh, all of this, I like to just leave the same. Then we just go import. One thing that, uh, I should have mentioned is when you're exporting from whichever program, make sure that your uh, project is set to an origin point of zero. So that when you export it from, say, Rhino, it will import into Unreal Engine at that point of origin. So your model is not like somewhere millions of kilometers away from the origin point. But in our case, I had my origin point set here. So you can see it's been imported right to where this is. So go ahead and just delete some of the stuff I don't need. You don't really need these volumes and stuff for now. So you can see the difference in material once we've imported it. It does look very similar to how it was in Rhino. Uh, as you can see, I said that there are no really bump or reflection maps on the materials by itself. But in the next video, we're going to go completely over uh, materiality and how to set up materials and the best way to apply materials to your model. So if you look on the right hand side here, all of your layering is turned into actors with child meshes. So if we go on to like, say a window, see all my windows are different mesh under the glass parent which I had. So keep that in mind when you're importing to set up your layers however you want, which will be the uh, most efficient way. In this case, I had all my glass under one layer because then you can just go right click, select immediate children. Then that way I can apply um, all of my materials in one go. But we'll get into that in the next video. You can also move everything via an actor. So say we have everything uh, that we import is under one Datasmith actor. I can move the entire scene just with that one actor. The same thing for your other layers. Let's say all my glass is under one actor. If I move just the actor, all the glass will move with it. In this case, it's completely transparent, so you can't really see, but you can see that it's all my glass is moving. So if you have like, say you import a car onto a scene and the car has all of these different things under one layer, if you just select that actor, you can move just the car by itself. Uh, now geometry normals is a big problem that you'll have when importing meshes. Because I've exported straight up um, poly surfaces and surfaces from Rhino, we don't have this problem, but I can't find any broken normals on this model. But if you're importing meshes, you definitely will have. But I'll still show an example of how you would fix that. What a broken geometry normal is, is pretty much, which I'll show you just by doing this. So we go selection to modeling. And we go down to attributes on the bottom left. Sometimes you'll import a material and it will be like um, essentially reversed and inverted. And that's a big problem with meshes because the Unreal Engine can't calculate which is the front facing of the mesh and which is the inside of the mesh it can't determine which is the correct one. So sometimes it will invert your meshes. So the inside will be outside and the outside will be inside. And um, you just need to go through your model if you're importing a lot of meshes and just check that to make sure that there are no inverted meshes because if there are, and it looks like this, then you just have to select it on modeling mode, go to attributes, normals, and then you just have to invert it. Or go fix inconsistent normals and just go accept, and then that will fix your inconsistent geometry normals. Uh, if you're building up a file where you're modifying something, say, uh, say you're doing a building design, if I was you, I would go into Rhino and select just the building by itself, then export that as a Datasmith file, then select your landscape and export that as a separate file. So anything that you're gonna update is its own separate file because it makes it much easier just to select it, then go immediate children, and then delete it that way and import your new file. It just keeps it a more clean um, workflow. Also, if you are going to be moving things around within your world, and I uh, say you want to take the roof off this building to edit the inside, I'll select the roof and the ceiling, and then turn on a grid snap to say like 100, then remove your roof, and then you can work on the inside, you know, put the furniture in. And then when you want to put it back together, if it's on that grid snap, it'll be much easier to put your model back together. So that's my guide on how to import your models into Unreal Engine. 
in the next video, we're going to be going over a complete full guide to materiality, applying materials and textures and getting this uh, scene looking realistic. So I hope to see you in the next video.